Hey everyone, this is Blackhawk SC, and welcome back to another episode of Playing the Meta, which is a series I use to provide build and gameplay references for the top mechs in the game today. In this episode, we're going to look at the Laser Vomit Hellbringer. I feature the Hellbringer numerous times on my channel since it's such a versatile chassis. Some of these builds have came and went, but the chassis itself has always remained strong due to the power of clan lasers, the ECM, and the relatively good mounts on this mech. Currently, the most common and best HBR build in the solo queue is Laser Vomit which in my opinion is the best laser vomit mech in the game. I also wanted to do this video as a follow-up for the which mech to buy for a new player video I did last year. In that video, I suggested the Hellbringer, but never provided a comprehensive explanation of how the fully skilled build is played. There are two popular versions. One uses LPLs and the other uses heavy larges. I've made a small optimization to the standard LPL build, which is to add a DHS to the right arm. Since the arms are pretty thin, it doesn't get shot at very often, which is why the 8 points of armor and 23 points of structure will hold up in most games until the right torso is shut off. The advantage of the LPLs is the lower burn time of the overall set of lasers. The LPLs are also slightly better against fast moving targets than the heavy large lasers. The heavy large laser version trades the higher laser duration for a bigger alpha and surprisingly better heat efficiency. This may be counterintuitive, as I also made the same mistake when the new heat sink values were introduced last year. But the DPS is higher on the heavy large version, and therefore more suitable in my opinion for the current solo queue. The bigger alpha also helps to deal with the fragility of this mech. The less you have to peek an alpha strike, the less you'll get shot. Let's take a look at the two alpha strikes side by side. Although the heavy large version takes longer to cool, it's doing more damage at that time. If you divide the damage by the time it takes for that heat to dissipate, the LPL version comes out to 6.6 .6 damage per second, and the heavy larges come out to 6.9 damage per second. The strength of the chassis comes from its ECM, range, and relatively high mounted lasers. You need to take advantage of those properties as much as possible to mitigate the HBR's biggest weakness, which is its easily destroyed side torsos. During map selection, you want to choose maps that offer mid-range hill peak opportunities where the battle normally occurs. This means maps like Polar Highlands, Forzen City Domination, New Forest Colony, and Terra Therma. I'll demo a Terra Therma game in this video to show how good the Hellbringer is on that map. You want to avoid close quarters maps like Solaris City, Mining Collective, Frozen City Classic, and super long range maps like Alpine Peaks and Frozen City Assault. On all maps, get into the fight early to take advantage of your relatively higher range. Choose positions where the enemy is not expecting to be shot from, Alpha Strike, and get back to cover to cool down. You want to start pressing the S button before your lasers finish burning, and sometimes before you even shoot. Because it takes time for the mech to decelerate and then reverse, if you know the enemy is going to be anticipating the next shot, reposition somewhere else. The ECM helps you get in that first shot and finish the burn, but will not protect you if you're overexposed. So learn where the weapon mounts are on the Hellbringer and try not to peek higher than necessary. When you're shielding, you prefer to give them the left side first. By the time the match is nearing the end and when your armor is weak, the ECM is really not that important anymore, and the 4 ER mediums don't output that much damage. As we see more NASCAR in the solo queue, Laser Vomit in general has lost ground compared to other playstyles like Daka, but it doesn't mean Laser Vomit is dead. Quite the opposite. The Laser Vomit Hellbringer is still my most reliable heavy mech, and it does moderately well even in the worst maps. The most well-known NASCAR maps have great hill peaking positions, like the middle of Canyon Network and Hibernal Rift, the HPG platform, and the F7 hill of Grim Plexus. If you get ahead of your team and therefore you're positioned at a 90 degree angle to the enemy NASCAR, you can often poke across those rotation points and get free damage. Since you're fast, you can stay ahead of the NASCAR and also get free damage on the tail end of the enemy rotation. For skills, we want to get all but one heat gen node, all duration and all cool run nodes. All ECM mechs need two enhanced ECM nodes. Survivability is the least important since the way the Hellbringer is played attempts to avoid damage altogether, and if you run consumables, you would take nodes off of that tree. Okay, let's get into a couple of matches. Let's take a look at this match on Polar Highlands uh, and show you some of the basic principles of the Laser Vomit build. Um, Polar Highlands is one of the best maps, as I mentioned, for Laser Vomit, and probably the, the best map, actually. And this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, it offers a bunch of these ridges where you can peek over, and you have um, the cold also helps, the cold ambient temperature also helps you uh, cool down faster. Uh, it gives you a lot of mid-range engagements, which you can use your range advantage uh, in the beginning of the game. Uh, and a lot of times there's a lot of learn boats, which the ECM helps you uh, 
uh, defend against. So you're at a relative advantage over uh, a Lerm heavy team. You could have noticed with that Ebon Jaguar poke that uh, the Ebon Jag actually has to expose a lot more surface area for him to get out his full alpha. Whereas, so he took uh, more damage on that trade than, than I did, uh, partly due to that reason. And probably due to, to due to his kind of sort of mixed loadout, uh, UX tens and and like micro lasers. Earlier, I talked about repositioning when you're seen, and that's what we're doing here. You'll see that I've been taking some shots beyond the heavy large optimal range. What you're doing here is you're getting like free damage from some of these guys who are pushing up to the center circle, and so free damage is better than no damage. And better than damage where, or damage where you where you're losing the trade, so just go and take these shots even if they're like pretty far out away, like 800 meters or something. You'll still you'll still do some damage, and you'll have enough time to cool down. What you'll notice is that we're trying to balance between safe and effective shots. So if you're going to take a lot of damage back, it's probably not worth uh, making that poke and maybe shooting, it's better to shoot something else. The only time when I take a lot of risks um, is when I know that sh last shot is going to be very effective on a target. For example, that target is core center torso, but he still has all of his weapons and just taking that mech out is going to be very helpful to the team and that's kind of the only time when that risk reward ratio favors more risk. Another tip is don't waste your laser burn. If you kill a mech, uh, move it onto a different target if your laser is still burning, and so don't waste that damage. So a lot of these LRM builds, um, they're if my teammates are also guarded by ECM, they're going to have a harder time locking onto my teammates as well. So what this is going to do is to give your team a relative advantage in Polar Highlands versus the other team. Providing ECM though is not your primary responsibility. Your primary responsibility is to do damage. So don't prioritize giving ECM to your team over doing damage. That kind of role is more suitable to mechs like the AMS Kitfox. This game is very NASCAR heavy, as you saw, and and Polar is uh, <laughs> Polar domination is very NASCAR heavy, but like the DPS keeps up even in this scenario. Should be pretty damaged. So you're not just at a total loss uh, when you have a NASCAR going on. Again, just using these ridges to peek over safely. If by the end of the match you're not heavily damaged uh, in your Hellbringer laser bomb, you've actually played this mech correctly. The idea is always to get good trades on the enemy, right? It's not to trade armor. You don't have that much armor. You don't have that much structure to work with. Your hitboxes really suck. So beginning of the game, as you saw, we were able to act more independently. And by the end of the game, when there's a NASCAR going on, we're sticking close to the team and not getting pushed on and uh, oh, yeah. providing that support fire. I just need to kill the last guy and uh, we can end the match here. I kind of want to show you guys this match as sort of a bonus. Um, I wanted to show you how good this chassis can be on Terra Therma. You know, when people take laser vomit builds, they, they're like, oh no, I got Terra Therma. But in reality, Hell, the Hellbringer is really awesome on Terra Therma. Um, partly because uh, the center platform here, the engagement area is around uh, the ear medium and heavy large laser optimal range. Like you can shoot across the caldera, caldera uh, using your ear medium lasers. And it's also kind of this flat surface where it provides a ridge that you can use your, your um, high mounted lasers and shoot over and often get really favorable trades. And so these two factors makes this map really good. Like it's the terrain actually matters more than 
the terrain and engagement range actually matters more than the ambient temperature, so don't be afraid of uh, this map if you're in a Hellbringer. As you can see right now, the enemy team is over at Gulf 7, they're on low ground. We're taking the higher higher ground and then peeking over that with uh, the high mounted lasers. And so we're getting really favorable trades that way. The better side is actually the other side. And so they must not have a lot of mechs that can do hill peaks and so they're moving low ground uh, over towards like the Gulf A area which is really bad for them because then that allows us to push through and get aggressive um, and then just take out these guys one by one. You can see how well the range plays out here. Uh, so something shot me in the back but that allowed me to see this arctic cheetah which I legged right now. I didn't see what was behind me. Must have been I didn't see any teammates behind me so it must be some sort of enemy. But anyways this arctic cheetah is legged and my idea was just to go and take it out now. So I wasn't sure which leg to shoot. I think it was the front. I think he's exposing his healthy leg to me in the front but I wasn't quite sure. So but I just wanted to, if I could take out his CT, like he's slow right now so I was thinking oh, I'd just take out his CT. But in retrospect I should have just shot his leg and just ended it right there. I just ended up spending too much time on this Arctic Cheetah. But we we killed him. Uh, standing still in the light, that's a pretty newbie mistake. So the fight is happening on the other side of the map now. So we're the ECM and kind of the environment itself, because you see how dark uh, Terra Therma is. So the environment and ECM is helping us uh, kind of hide from enemy fire, and just we're just taking shots across. We don't need to get any closer uh, than this. Put us at a relative disadvantage. Like if we go further we're, we're actually going to go to low ground and I have to pitch my torso up to shoot then you know that might not be really ideal for me. So staying at this range is quite good. Unless I'm getting pushed on right now which so I see that shadow cut coming. Shadow cat. I, I'm i not really afraid of the shadow cat but like it's still I'd still rather keep him at range. See he's going after me now. So yeah I'd rather just keep him at range. Uh, 9 3. So we're going to work on this Black Lantern. In this match, you should have also seen that what we're doing is playing at range, playing it kind of safe, uh, being proactive, but you know, taking shots, but not putting yourself so much uh, in the focus of enemy fire. And that's how you play the Hellbringer. We're able to get the top damage on this match on either team. Remember if your DPS goes down, so does most other builds in this game. So don't worry about Terra or Caustic if you're in any if you're in a laser boat. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this series, I'll link the playlist in the description below. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.